Hello and good morning. You are back with the crew. We are back on the vessel. And uh, I've, uh, it's a bit early in the morning, so it's a little foggy out still. So glad you guys are back with me. I have kind of a fun little story that happened to me yesterday, and I thought I'd share it with everybody. It's one of those stories that all of us have had, but this one's pretty interesting. I, as many of you know, I have a small little farm. And uh, because of the many blessings in my life, and uh, my wife and my son and I have been so blessed uh, by you all and by um, finances and other things. We're not wealthy people, but we're getting there, right? We're getting there together. I that much I know for sure. So <clears throat> I'm taking pork. We've been able to... Uh, I, didn't, I wasn't even going to go there. I'm giving some people some pork, okay? And I was going, running down the hill. And down the hill is, we live up in the mountains. So going down into the valley and we're giving some people uh, some pork. It was his 50th birthday. I'm not going to use his name. But, uh, I've never met the man before. He works with my wife. Uh, I don't really even know much about the man. And uh, I barely I didn't even know his name until he called me and he, he said hey meet me on this corner and drop the pork off you know a big cooler full of pork for a bunch of people and it was his 50th birthday so it's really kind of a neat story so he <clears throat> that was early yesterday morning and I'm talking to this guy and it's like hey you know congratulations on your birthday 50 is a big deal you know this and that and, and uh, so he 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 kind of looks at me and we started talking about uh, money in the economy and different things and I thought wow okay this guy's really pretty sharp when it comes to the economy I thought that was pretty interesting and then he says to me hey uh, do you know what Bitcoin is <laughs> seriously that's what the guy said to me and I was like okay well he's been talking to my wife my wife must have said something to him about it. I said yeah I I know what cryptocurrencies are. I was like, did you talk to Elizabeth about this? He goes, no, is she into Bitcoin? I was like, yeah, it's a long story. Well, anyway, what, what, what were you asking about? And, and he, so he tells me this story out of the blue, guys. That's the life we all live, right? Out of the blue. He starts telling me a crypto story. <laughs> Man, I've never met. I'm giving him a bunch of uh, uh, pork. So, you know, for his friends and family. And he t starts telling me a crypto story. So the story goes something like this. His friend says, hey, you know what you ought to do? This is way back when. You ought to buy some of this Bitcoin. And I guess it was like somewhere around two cents or something like that. It was really, really cheap. Like ridiculously cheap. And it's, oh, you ought to buy some of this. You ought to buy some of it. It's the new thing. And this, but he, as he tells the story, this guy's a bit of a hustler and, you know, scam artist type guy, a little kind of the shady side of life. And he was like, you know, I wanted to believe him because everything he was saying sounded so real and so, so good. I thought, well, maybe I should get some. Maybe I shouldn't. So he didn't, and uh, so his buddy, you know, calls him up, whatever it is, or saw him again a couple of months later, and he, or a couple of years, I think it was, actually. And he said, hey, you know, uh, what, whatever happened to you and that Bitcoin stuff? He goes, oh, man, man, I sold it. And he goes, uh, oh, okay. Well, how much did you have in there? He goes, ah, you know, I only had a couple hundred bucks, you know. But think about it, a couple hundred bucks at two cents, right? I, and I was like, I'm doing the math in my head. I'm like, well, I wonder how you had a couple hundred bucks at two cents. Like, that's a lot. He sold it for $500. Oh, <laughs> are you kidding me? Like a couple of hundred dollars at two cents and he sold it for $500. I was like, well, the guy did really well, right? And he goes, oh, crazy. Like, that guy is ridiculously rich now. Like, like he doesn't scam anymore. He doesn't need to. You know, he bought this big house and da da da. I was like, so, it, so he goes, so you're into crypto. I was like, yeah, I kind of know a little bit about it. I was trying to play it cool, right? And he's, he's like, well, you know, you're not going to believe it. You're going to love this, right? He goes, you know, I, it's too late for Bitcoin for me anyway. I'm like, yeah, I kind of, I kind of get that. That makes a lot of sense. 
I said, well, what else are you looking at? <laughs> he goes, well, I've got some XRP. Just like that, folks. Oh, I've got some XRP. What do you think of that? <laughs> I looked at him and I went, are you sure, Elizabeth, my wife, didn't put you up to this whole conversation? He goes, no, I'm like, I didn't, like, I didn't even know if she's into crypto. I go, well, she is, but not like I am. Oh, wow. So you're really into this. I went, yeah, yeah. In fact, I went to the XRP meetup in Las Vegas just for XRP. He looks at me. He's like, no way. Really? Like, so you know about it? And I'm like, yeah, I know a little bit about XRP. What do you want to know? And he's like, well, I'm, I'm nervous. You know, I, I really think it's going to go up, but I don't know when. I said, well, none of us really know that, do we? I said, but this, here's the thing. It's 50 cents. He goes, yeah. I go, well, your buddy bought a bunch of two cents. That's kind of out the door for, for XRP. However, it could go down, as we all know. I don't think it'll ever go that low again. Never. Uh, and if it does, buy it. But So I said, you're buying it at 50 cents. And now you, you said you bought a bunch a while back, right? And he said, yeah, I, 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 you know, I don't have a lot, but I got, you know, maybe a thousand bucks in it. And I was like, great, that's good. You know, you must have bought it at a better price. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah. No, I bought it a few years ago. I, I got a good deal on it. I don't know how many coins I have. So he kind of knew what he was doing, you know, and I was like, wow, okay, so make sure they're on your own wallet. He says, yeah, I got that figured out. I said, okay, don't touch it, don't play with it, keep it offline, and uh, do, you know, do your best. I, I said, but uh, 50 cents is cheap. And that's that concept, right? It's really hard for us to understand. And I started to talk to him about it, and he said, I understand what you mean because it's hard for me to buy XRP today because I bought it back when it was under 20 cents, I think he told me. And I can't, I think it's too expensive. And I have that in my head. And I said, well, exactly. Sort of like your buddy will never buy Bitcoin again because it's too expensive. Because he sold it at $500 and I'll bet you he never bought back in. He goes, no, he never did. He never bought back in. Understand, people, what you own. Understand values. Understand they're only going to continue to print money. They're no longer making any more XRP or Bitcoin or any of the other ones. Well, some of them they are, I guess, still creating. They're not going to make any more of them. They're only going to go up. Are they going to go down? Of course, there's volatility in all markets. But 50 cents, I'm not trying to tell anyone to buy it at 50 cents because it's a good possibility it could go cheaper, right? But when you're trying to pick the bottom or when you try and sell your coins at top dollar and then you think top dollar is top dollar and then it triples or even more than that, let's stop and think. Let's just use $30,000 for Bitcoin. He sold it at $500. It's gone up 60 times since then. Correct? Yeah, something like that. Anyway, you get the point. That's ridiculous, right? I mean, that's like, and he'll never buy back in. Point of the video. Like I said to him, and this is the hardest thing for most people to understand. I looked at him in the eye and I said, never sell your XRP. The only mistake your friend made was selling his Bitcoin. Can you see that now? And he goes, well, kind of, but, you know, he got a big house on the hill and he did really well. And I said, I need you to stay with me on this. Had he kept his Bitcoin, it's at 25000 I think I told him thirty yesterday. It's at $30,000. He paid two cents. Do you understand the multiples here? He, he could have, 
he would be a billionaire or whatever the number is. It's ridiculous. Hundreds of millions. Oh, it's billions. It's got to be. So understand the long game is what you and I are playing. I hope you get that. The long game is what's developing right now. All you need to do is start looking at the tax laws that they're mostly giving just to Bitcoin because it's such a big number and there's so much wealth in it and there's so many people holding on to it. They have to find avenues or ways for people to get their money out of it or to get an income from it monthly. Which leads me to my final point. I get people asking me this all the time. Alan, how do you make money by staking your coins. First of all, I do not recommend staking XRP. I know there's a many avenues out there. You can look into it if you want to do that. Not my recommendation. I'm not doing it that way. Many people do. I like having my keys and my own XRP. I like knowing where it is. If I were to own XRP. <laughs> so, what you want to do if you want to stake if you have coins that are stakeable, there was a report that just came out and it said Exodus Wallet was the most safest online wallet. Okay, I'm a big fan of Exodus. I love the founder of the company. He started the whole thing. He's a libertarian. He's very honest. He's very sound. He, he understands sound money. I don't know if you remember, but during the whole um, the truckers thing up in Canada, he said, well, anybody that got, has their money on Exodus wallet, I can't do anything about that. I can't stop them from taking their money out of their wallet. I don't care if the government came to me with a gun in my head. I can't do anything about it. It's their money, not my money. I can't stop people from entering and exiting Exodus. That's a beautiful thing. And he's willing to put it out there because he doesn't control it. He doesn't own their keys. He doesn't manage it. Anyway, I trust doesn't, this is not financial advice. Ex, Exodus could go belly up tomorrow. I'm not trying to say put your coins there at all. I'm just saying if you're looking for the safest that we have, not that there couldn't be a black swan event for it, but there could, that is the best way if I were to be a staker the best way to stake your coins would be on Exodus Wallet, in particular, like a coin like Cardano. If you own Cardano, they pay for assets on that online wallet. Just one of the things I was talking about with somebody, uh, just a really fun story. I hope you get the, the whole concept of don't sell your coins. There's going to be a come a day when you're going to be able to take your coins and earn an interest, okay, through staking in a more safe manner than it currently is because Mr. Burns is messing everything up right now. Later in life or years down the road, even as early as next year, we could have a way more sound functioning system with the Fidelities and the Black Rocks coming in to where you can actually securely hold your own keys and earn an interest or borrow against these coins. That's all coming. It's all headed our way. And with that, I am out. Thank you. There's something wrong with our eyes today. If you can tell a wise man by the color of his skin, then mister, you're a better man than I. What's the next line to that song? Love you guys.